and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the Cup Chasers podcast. Thanks for being here. Thanks for listening. It's been a wonderful weekend in the Premier League. For most, I should say, not for all. Uh, but uh, we're definitely grateful to be here. Grateful for some of these amazing games. Uh, you know, some bold predictions there, Lewis. Burnley hosted Aston Villa. Um, they're brave, man. I'll tell you, Burnley yep. are, are a brave side. I'll give them that. But there's some work to be done. That Villa counter, man, is just deadly. Killer. And there was a particular move that Villa were just doing over and over and over again in that first half. And it was destroying Burnley. Um, they would cut in and have Diaby just overlap. Heck of a signing, by the way. The left, yeah, Musa Diaby, yeah. He would overlap the left side, the left back, and they would just, I mean, just a simple overlap and a ball across. Um, that's how they scored their second, that's how they scored their second goal. Um, yeah, I mean, and it was just, they were just getting down the, getting down the flanks um, really well. Ollie Watkins using the speed for the first goal. Mm-hmm. And that third goal, man, Musa Diaby is going to cause problems. Oh, but, yeah, very much so. But Burnley's goal scorer, Burnley's goal was really well taken as well. Yeah, it was. So uh, I think that, yeah, I'm really impressed with Villa. And uh, I don't think Burnley are going to get eighth, Lewis, but I think they'll, I think they'll survive. I think they're going to be brave enough to survive. I think they'll figure it out. I mean, Villa yeah. Villa's legitimately good. I think I what, what we pick. I think I picked Villa to finish in in a Europe spot, if I'm not mistaken. Well, I think I picked them fourth. Yeah, yeah. I, both I think Villa's them. good. I mean, they just they they are. I think they're better than Burnley. But I think the next time they'll play them, they'll be better. Like Burnley will give them more of a game. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let's see. The Tottenham Hotspur have beaten Bournemouth two nil. Bosta Coglu. Uh, Bosta Coglu, man. He's, he's got Coglu. something going there. He's, uh, yeah, James Madison, uh, the greatest English player that there's ever, ever to breathe air uh, with, a, with a nice, just the most well-taken fluffed goal anybody's ever. <laughs> uh, any, any No one has fluffed a shot like James Madison. Can yeah. shot. I'm just saying, man, what a goal this was. <laughs> no, but uh, he's made, he's, no, he's made a good run. He's mm-hmm. definitely fluffed the shot, but he's uh, done enough to get it by the keeper. That's all that matters. Um, definitely, definitely running things in that midfield. You well, Basuma is fantastic as well Basuma. in that midfield. Yeah. And then uh, was it Odogi? Odogi? Yadogi, yeah. Yadogi, yeah. He's he's been Straight fantastic up. as well. You know, Straight. I still. I think this is the part for Spurs where teams don't really know how to defend them yet. But as we get further into the season, they're going they're to. Huh? They're too open. Yeah, exactly. That's why I'm I not too, that's why I'm too the worried season, about them. You're going to start seeing some results where people are like, okay, we got we to gotta play more defense. Now, Liverpool, and, Spurs, Liverpool Spurs will be lots of, lots of goals. Oh, yeah. But – yeah, you know, I give I give credit to Pasta Coglu, Pasta Coglu. Um, you know, just say Big Edge. Big. Let's see. I think about Pasta. Pasta Coglu is the best way that I can think. Of, right? He looks like he's pasta. He eats tons of pasta. Uh, I'm, w- I'm with you. I'm with you, Ange. Ange. Um, but uh, you know, they. I actually sat down and watched. <laughs> Spurs game on Saturday, you know, and I it wasn't was the only game on. I still could have, yeah, I could have well, anything else. Could have yes. passed it. I could have found a German league or something to watch at that point. I think, I think, having said that though, after watching this game, I think Bournemouth are going to be okay as well. Yeah, I, yeah, um, they've got Black they've Kelly, got like Slanky. I think, I think they've got enough again this season. Yeah, I can't believe Solanke is. Still in the Premier League, yeah. Well, I, I, Jake, I'll put it like this: I bet you would take James Madison over Kai Havertz. 
You're pushing it. <laughs> I, I think you would. Watch yourself. I think, you would. <laughs> I think you would. Let's move on. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Brentford hosting Crystal Palace. Um, 1-1 one, one draw. X got this one right. Uh, these teams are pretty evenly matched. I uh, I thought Brentford would edge it, but uh, I did go back and watch the highlights of this one. This is the only one I didn't watch any of at all. But um, Eze, man, Eze looks really good. That's why City were yeah. after him. Yeah, I, um, I hope they go get him. He had that one run that was almost kind of like Sterling's run in the London game. Uh, just didn't have the final the final finish. Um, yeah, man, both these teams tricky tricky teams to beat this season. Arsenal should have done better, but definitely shown that Palace are uh, tough customers. But uh, Brentford at home, it's a tough place to play. Oh yeah, tough place to play for sure. But yeah, I think a better result for Palace, I would say. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, the away draw. Um, but, uh, yeah, not much else on that one. A London, a London derby. London derby, absolutely. Everton are in trouble. They suck. Straight up trouble. It is they not suck. a good situation. And just as I knew it, Wolves would come good. I knew Wolves would come good. Uh, got the goal the very end of the game. But... The reason I started with Everton being in trouble is because just like the Fulham game at the beginning of the season, chance after chance after shot after miss after wide after chance after why do we not have anybody that can put the ball in the net? Well, like, they're about to sign some guy, uh, Beto. I saw that, but I mean, hopefully, hopefully. But Dan Juma is just not cutting it. No. Neil Malpe is just no. No. He had, he had one great goal against Chelsea while at Brighton, and that's kind of his. Calvin Lewin's face is still broken, so yeah. that's not good. It's it's a, it's a dire straits, man. But uh, I mean, uh, Wolves in those in that red away kit. Have you seen that away kit yet? It yeah, I was nice. like, they're wearing red? What? Like, I actually like it a lot, and uh, I'm happy for Gary O'Neill. Yeah, they, Wolves remind me of the Australia team in the 2014 World Cup. Socceroos. They, they had Holland, they had uh, Spain, and they had Chile. And they got pammed by everybody. But they played, they, they were good. They played really well. And Tim Cahill scored possibly the goal of the tournament. And they got beat 3-0 every game. Mm -hmm. Wolves remind me of that. They're a really good side. They look a good side, but they're just not quite there. And good teams are going to put them down. But I'm taking them out of my relegation picks. I think that Everton have replaced them <laughs> in my relegation picks. Oh, yeah. They've yet to score a goal, Everton. Yeah. Yeah. I actually thought uh, – well, I went back and – watched it like three or four times i actually thought wolf's goal was an own goal at first um because it, it looked close uh yeah. but it did come off of the, the wolves player um the strikers uh head um but uh i was going to oh speaking of wolves diego costa is back in brazil and scoring goals Oh my goodness! Of course, he, he played did. this weekend and scored a goal. Um, <laughs> the Brazilian league, um, but what the what Wolves really have to do is they they need to keep Nunez. Um, yeah. I, I don't know what's going to come of that, but if they lose him, it's it it can get tough. It can get tough. It won't be the end of the world, but if they lose him. He's it, gone. The end of the world, but it's it's not going to be good. He's a major player, major major cog in the machine. Yeah, he's yeah. gone. He's gone. Yeah, when see, is, when that, is that a Lewis guarantee? Practicing. I don't guarantee I, much, but when the player said, "Hey, I ain't going to practice anymore," he gone. Yeah, yeah, I feel like him. Speaking of uh, surprises, another big surprise in the league so far: West Ham United at the Amex. I'm confused again. Confused again. Antonio 
Put Antonio's some a beast, on it, baby. Oh He's my, an absolute goodness. beast. He got a what a an assist and a goal in this one. Mm-hmm. Let's say I'm best of the rest right now. Yeah. Ooh, they were they were on top of the league for the that, night. That uh, Jorm, James Ward Prowse uh, purchase is is gonna pay off. It He's is. already got what a goal uh, and Edson three assists Alvarez has come in. James, yeah, two goals, three assists already. Yeah, yeah, yeah and then they got Kudis coming in. I mean, they're, somehow they're gonna... from from absolute shambles, they've sold Declan Rice, and then for like a week, people were like, "They're not doing anything. What are they? They're, they're not doing anything." Players. And all then they buy three players. All of a sudden, they're top of the league for at least for you know seventeen hours for like seven or eight hours, whatever it was. Uh, you know, they've beaten Brighton at home. At Alphonse Ariola's resurged his Paris Saint Germain form. Like, what? They're, they're cooking, man. West Ham, West Ham are doing it. And they've got uh, Lutton next. Yeah, so they, they're winning that one. They're going to smash. Yeah. Well, they're going to Kenilworth. So you never know. Well, Kenilworth, you know. They're going to beat them there. They're going to beat them. Yeah. But this game, man. I couldn't believe it. Like save after save, Ariola might still be the man of the match, yeah. even with three goals uh, having been scored. And Mikel Antonio, man, he's. I'm telling you, I've been I've been saying it ever since the pod started. I, I'm a fan. He's, oh, he's yeah. he is a striker's striker, dude. Like dude, just works, works his socks off. He's huge. You can't. He's he's gonna bully you. You're not bullying him. He's he's almost too big, you know, as far as like, you know, muscular or whatever. But he's still fast. He's got the smarts. He's got a. I mean, ask Chelsea. He can take. He's a got shot, a right foot. You know, and uh, yeah, man. It wasn't for lack of trying on Brighton's part. You know, it's just the yeah. way Brighton play. They they're open. Yeah, and uh, they. You didn't expect it from West Ham, but. They got punished time and again. West Ham looked dangerous every time going forward. Uh, you know, so uh, yeah, that's a massive. I, I, I saw a meme where uh, West, uh, there was, it was a um, Brighton fan, and they're like, "Can we go back and ask Chelsea for Sanchez for 120 million?" <laughs> right? Oh my god! <laughs> oh no! Yeah. Um, oh, it's hilarious. Tough one for tough one for Brighton to take. I don't yeah, know, and you West know, was and better. you know, deep down, that that front office was like, oh, we're gonna show that we're better than Chelsea. That we can, you know, we 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 can get the result. We can win, and oh, uh, it 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 kind of it kind of brought a smile to my face because I'm like, you know what? They were gonna, they're so we're gonna throw some shade if oh, they yeah. found a way to win. Oh yeah, they were. Yeah, they were. But, but uh, West Ham. West Ham too much in the end looks like a resurgence. Little, little David Moyes resurgence. Uh, it's almost come- like his uh, United day. Yeah. 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 Who knows, man? We'll see if they can sustain the good form. Speaking of Manchester United, very, very old Trafford things happening on the right side of Manchester. What a game this was. Four minutes in. On one ye, a one ye. They're down one two. He's zero. automatic. And if I, if I wasn't cussing and fuming, because Arsenal were also losing four minutes into the flipping game, I would have been laughing so hard. Oh my god! I did go back and watch. I actually watched this full ninety. The second, uh, the, the second goal was funny because Bali didn't even know it. Just hit him. It just hit <laughs> yeah, him. He, it literally hit him in the face. It just hit him. <laughs> he just like. <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed that a lot. Uh, I, I was even a glancing at her. It just popped off. I just hit him in the face. Yeah. The first goal, oh, uh, Onana just sat down. He just the breakaway. He just terrible. He, he he stumbles. What lost, happened to him? He stumbled. He lost his footing. No, I mean, the, he, he ended ball. up at United. That's what happened to him. What, what to, happened to him? He went to United. <laughs> he tried to maul a Wolves player, and now he's all nervous. 
<laughs> he got away with one, so he's like, oh, I don't know if they're going to give me that one again. <laughs> That's going to be a perfect segue to, to what I wanted to talk about earlier. Yeah. Go ahead. VAR. Let's talk about VAR. Uh, and I'm not talking about, um, you know, why are we going to, you know, oh, their offsides are still kind of iffy, whatnot. This whole thing with Mike Dean is concerning, truthfully. Corrupt. Monstrous. You say corrupt? Absolutely ridiculous. It, it, I mean, it, what you're, you're questioning the integrity of the game because the referee isn't willing to, or the VAR referee especially, is not willing to call down and say, hey, you need to look at this. I hurt your feelings. Corrupt. Or hurt your feelings. Yeah, you know, we, I talked about it a while back about, you know, the thing about the prim refs are they're not very good. So you rely on VAR, but VAR, you know, isn't doing their job because they don't want to show up their, their, it's their the same friend. People. It's the same referees from refs yes. yesterday were in the center. So it's a brotherhood that they've, they've, they've strengthened the ties of by making it an us against them thing. I heard a really good point about it. The fact that, the guys at Stockley Park should not be referees. They should be people who know the game, people who are members of the PGMOL or whatever and, like, are affiliated with the game, but they should not be someone who's, like, a center ref or a line judge at any point during the season. They should be their own body of referees who have experience but who are not, like, connected to the other referees. And that should happen. And that should happen immediately because of what Mike Dean said. Well, you and can't the fact over he, the guy in the middle. You can't make. You can't not make a call because you feel sorry for the dude in the middle. But the exactly. fact that he said that out loud. The fact he was comfortable enough to say that tells you all you need to know. Yeah. Because there'll be no consequences. There'll be no consequences. There'll consequences. And there'll I mean, and, and I'm can't not say trying to bring it back to Chelsea, but the the moment that he's talking about, like, yeah. it was clear as day. It changed the, the course of the match. You know, it, it changed the result completely. It did change the result. You lost two points because of it. We lost two points because of that. And it caused all the the kind of chaos that kind of ensued afterwards. Because, you know, you saw that there was something wrong with Tuchel at that point. That was the Tuchel Conte handshake game. Yeah. You saw there were some things kind of going on there. Um and it just kind of led to the chaos to, to you know, kind of snowball at that point. But, again, it is concerning because I've always said, you know, people say don't blame refs. And I don't. I don't. But what my argument is is a referee has the chance to change the course of the game however they want it to be because they'll have human error that will allow something to happen or – you know, they'll they'll call something when they shouldn't have. And now we're relying on video. I mean, it's clear as day. You know, we're relying on video. And the guy that's in charge of it is like, no, I don't want to show up the guy that's on the field. So I'm not even going to – I'm just going to go with the call on the field. But, but here's the thing why this showing him up doesn't make any sense to me, right? Because it, if you're calling the guy over, you want him to look good, right? Yeah. Why, why? Where would the showing up be? Hey, you know, you you can say you can blame it on me. Literally, you're you're the VAR referee allows you to scapegoat them. Yeah. So so we're looking at it from the other way, which means that it's just corrupt, man. And it is. It's it's worse that it happened there because we already knew. We, we already. already I mean, we, we are. Already. So when you say they they what was it, Jake? We said that it was 17 games or a bunch of games. Well, how many ever games United hasn't lost at home? How many of them are attributed to well, the, they have my, not lost since the opening here. day of last season? They have not lost a game at home since the opening day of last season. And, and, and City would have beat them there last year. I mean, call me biased, but it changed the Arsenal game. Mm-hmm. It changed the Arsenal game huge. Not, not you know, getting that given that goal in the Arsenal game, but. You know, to bring it back to this game, this is this is this is the softest penalty I think I've ever seen in my life. And to not even like, how long did that VAR check last? About half a second. 
Yeah, and that shows the corruptness of it all. I, you know, you're not taking a full look at that. You're not no, actually checking is. it. You're just like, oh, they called it. We're just going to agree with it. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. but it begs the question for this. I'm going to go a step further based on that. So United should be actually be better than what they are. Yeah. I mean, if, if you got people literally yeah. helping you win games, why are you not better? Yeah. I really hope Arsenal punched them in the face, man. Because if they don't. That's going to be a sad day. It's going to be a sad day. Shark may seriously come back at that point. Oh, yes. my God. Yeah. I, will say th- I will say this, though. You know, I don't, I don't like to just make this a hate fest on United as much as I do they hate. Um, credit for the comeback, for the mentality. Um, also, the second goal was, was a pretty cleverly worked free kick. Everyone switches off because even the commentator said it, and I was thinking the same thing. I was like, why? What has he done? He's just wasted a free kick, you know, and then Bruno sneaks in on the back post, uh, you know, for the for the, the cutback. You know, it was it was it was a nicely worked free kick. We'll give it to him. And then Casemiro, of course, is the one that gets the tap in. He bungles it in. <laughs> Yeah, of course it's Casemiro, the greatest center defensive midfielder to ever walk the planet. You know, um, but I think that this game shows a lot of frailties in United. Um, it's an inter- and, uh, it's so interesting to say that their mentality was awful in the beginning because, you know, you give two goals immediately, but then they fought back. So, uh, you know, credit where it's due, um, you know, and. Uh, I got a question, Jake. Once again, they get get another one. <laughs> if 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 Arsenal goes up two nil and you already said two nil is their thing. Sir, <laughs> I just want to know, because we all kind of have this whole, you know, Arsenal relaxes after two nil. I'll be pissed. I'll be pissed if we pull another one of those things. You know, like, we should smash them. But if we play Thomas Partey and right back, we won't. Yeah. Marcus, um, Rashford, Marcus Rashford will have a field day. How about, uh, how bad back. do you think United fans are wishing they had De Gea again? After all the hate they had for him. I doubt it. Did he ever get signed? No. Uh, no, he's a free agent still. Still a free agent. I, I, he, led, yeah. he led the league in, in, in clean sheets last year. Greatest keeper ever. Yeah, but once again, you know, they you know half of those were old Trafford, you know. Of course. I, I saw a, a a wild stat. Um in the last twelve games, Bruno has either had an assist or a goal. I, didn't I pick him for to, to get the most assist? I think I did. Yeah. He, he's, he's not a, like he's, he's a good player. His attitude sucks. He's it. a good player. He's just not worth it. No matter yeah. what point, no matter what points he puts up, he's not worth it for me. Um, and uh, yeah, respect, respect when he does do good things, but uh, he, he's his attitude is just not. A, it just doesn't do it for me. You know, and uh, it's gross, and it feels really bad for Forrest, who uh, they just they're just they're just too deep, man. They just defend way too deep, and they give ground too much. It's tough to it's tough to win games like that, um, especially when the crowd's against you, the refs are against you. You know, it's it's the whole the whole thing. But I will say, I like that white and blue kit. It's Forrest. nice. Nice kid. Kind of icy. Anthony Alanga got back on the field for uh, Old Trafford uh, welcome home. Um, then but, he sky uh, won to C19. Yeah, then he hits the city fan in C19. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I'm not chalk one up. Uh, another win for Old Trafford. I'm not sure United necessarily get the win, but uh, Old Trafford will take the points anyway. Uh, but, yeah, 
There you have it. It's definitely been a wonderful week three in the Premier League. We're excited about the continuing action. We do have the Champions League draw coming up. We will be tuned in. Uh, and you never know, there might be uh, something a little extra here on the Cup Chasers that day as well. So stay tuned. Uh, like the video. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel as well. We're on our way to 100 subscribers. So go ahead and get that number up and get that bell on for all of the new videos. Thanks for being here. Thanks for listening and have a great night.